Our brand new cycle of basic space lands is now available for purchase at www.itresolvesmtg.com. What's going on, guys? Welcome to part two with the Simic Hail Hydra deck. Uh, we uh, in the in the first video. If you didn't check it out, please do check it out. We we go over the the deck a little bit and kind of see exactly why we have everything in there. But uh, we did get two wins with this list. Uh, which I think is, is is about as good as we could have expected. That, I, I don't think we uh, expected too much more from this. So uh, I'm excited to see if we can get at least a couple more this time around. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll see what we can do. I'm, uh, I f it's a little light on land, but I'm going to try it. I do think the land count in this deck is a piece that we could be doing a little better in. But, uh, oh, guys, hold on. Our frame rates are dropping. We're going we're gonna to drop out and jump back in. Um I, it's gotten better actually recently, but every once in a while it still creeps in where we've got the bad frame rate issues. So I am just going to drop out and jump in. We will see, hopefully, that the uh, next match isn't quite as bad. So, um, yeah, just want to mention, I did mention it in the first video. Uh, we are planning to give away a 20, Corset 2021 bundle uh, as soon as we can. Re uh, as soon as we can. Um, we'll probably do it as a lead up to the actual release. So. Uh, if you're interested, you can certainly pick one of those up uh, and enter that giveaway. Once we have it up, it is not up yet, uh, so just keep that in mind. Again, a little land light, um, but Callus Dismissal really, really helps us to interact with the opponent's board a little bit, uh, so we are going to try it. I'm also going to lead off on the temple just so we can hopefully get a land on top. Um, we'll see. <laughs> uh, we may be unlucky this time, but we'll we'll do the best we can. Okay. Oh, guys, it's happening. It's happening. All right, put the Ozolith down. <clears throat> what would be great is if they, like, tap the Paradise Druid, we can just Voracious Hydra fight it next turn. That might work. Probably not. We'll see. We'll see. I don't have high hopes. Uh, we definitely need some lands here. Oh, goodness. I definitely think the land count is a problem with this list. Oh no. Oh no. Um, let's just say so we've got something. Let's go ahead and do this. Um, that feels kind of bad, but at least slows him down a little bit and gets us a creature out that can block. Oh, good. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Well... <laughs> Okay, uh, land is good. Land is helpful. Uh, let's drop Kiora. Because I think that's kind of our best bet. And then we'll pass. The fact that this has Hexproof, Reach, and Trample is stupid. <laughs> uh, good news is they're missing land drops too. So there's a positive in all of this. Um, just to even the playing field. Not that I ever wish that on anybody, but if we're doing it, I would love for the opponent to be in the same position. <laughs> Land? No. Of course not. That would be ridiculous. Um, okay, well, we go for, for, wow, the Voracious Hydra. Oh, wait. Let's untap you. And then do this. Do this. Just getting two counters. Then we're going to double them up. Um, yep, no attacks. At least we have a strong creature now. I mean, it's something. So one good thing about Voracious Hydra is even if you don't have a whole lot of lands, you can still get a lot of value out of it, which is a plus. Um, oh, that's Hexproof, whatever this creature. That's interesting. Um, that's, like, surprisingly good right now. Uh... Oh, wait, we can't target it. Just kidding. It's not as good as I thought it was. Um, okay, so let's attack first. Then I think we may just end up making the same play again. Um, it's not super exciting in terms of plays, but, like, it's a play, so we'll just do this. It at least gives us two of these four fives that they're going to have to fight through. So there is some positive there. 
All right. Sure, that's fine. Okay. Oh, uh, let's see. I kind of just want to use this on this, which is kind of lame, but like, um, I guess we should attack first. Can we really do much? I mean, we can Hydroid Crisis for a couple. Let's do this first. Let's attack. Uh, doubt they'll block, but might as well worth or, or worth uh, looking at considering. I can speak, I promise. Um, let's do this. Continuously don't click the right lands. Okay. Um, we'll untap this. We'll just do this for two. No, it's not amazing, I know, but that's fine. Leaf Kindred. Interesting. Alright. It gives us a flying threat at the very least. Now, I know that this has reach, uh, but that just means they have to leave it up if they want to, to block. Or just, like, use a kill spell on it, which I'm kind of okay with if they want to do that. I was really hoping we get a land off the Hydroid Crisis. A little sad we didn't, but that's okay. Okay, so they do get to blow something up here. <laughs> Worth noting, though, uh, in doing so, they've had to tap down their big creature, which could be a problem for them. Land, huh? So we can Nissa. Let's do that. We're going to attack all. Um... They are probably going to get to mutate onto the Gym Razor again uh, and blow up a creature, but Nissa really, really helps to make that not quite as strong. And we'll just play this out. Might as well get as much out as we can. See what they can do. I'm liking this deck, though, I will say. It feels pretty good. Uh, I mean, you, you'll notice without that many lands, we're still able to get here. It took us a while, um, but we're still able to get to a point where we're... Our board presence is very good. Um, this is a problem, uh, but probably not enough to... I would have killed, I think, the Hydra Grace. Well, does, the Voracious Hydra has Trample, so no, that makes sense. Um, but this has flying so yeah okay cool well we got there uh that was a bit of a uh, a long match for a long game just for what actually happened but that's okay uh let's go ahead and jump into game two here um i just want to mention also to everybody uh if you're not already in our discord i would certainly appreciate it if you would go uh to the link down below and join in uh, we've got a really, really great group of people in our Discord. Um, it's fun to hang out with them. I don't always get to participate because I'm usually either working or recording, but uh, it's really, really nice to to talk to some people in there from time to time. This hand's kind of bad. Um, better. Dovin, I think, goes back. Um, it's a really great place to just kind of hang out with some like-minded people and, you know, talk about magic and talk about new spoilers, you know, whatever. Uh, so it's a, it's a really fun, fun little place to hang out. It's open to everybody. Uh, anybody that that's watching, you're more than welcome to join. You don't have to be subscribed to the channel or anything like that. Uh, of course we'd appreciate it, but you certainly don't have to. Uh, and so if you're interested, please do check it out. We'd, we'd appreciate the, uh, the community support. Uh, it's great to talk to other people and hang out and discuss magic and all that kind of stuff. It's fun. So Oh, let's see. Next turn, what are we looking to do? Depends what they do this turn, really. Leafkin Druid, kind of surprisingly good right now. Um, 
If they attack, we don't block. If they try and kill that, okay. That's kind of fine. It's not great, but it's fine. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna slow him down a little bit here. We got nothing else to do this turn anyway. Next turn they can play out the, the knight if they would like, and then we can follow that up with Voracious Hydra and just kill it. <laughs> um, that's fine. I'd much rather them use their shock on a 1-1, one -one, so that's totally cool. Um, we'll figure out what we can actually do next turn though, depending on what they play. Um... If they start playing a bunch of stuff out, then that's great, because that does mean we get to kill something with Voracious Hydra. If they don't, that means we kind of do have to be careful about the uh, ability on the Knight of the Ebon Legion, because they could very easily just pump it in response to us trying to kill it, uh, which would give it plus three plus three, which makes that a little bit difficult. Interesting. Um... So in this case, I'm not sure which we actually want to fight. Hmm. Uh, it's probably that one. As much as the Knight of the Ebon Legion is a problem, um, I think we have to kill that one. Man, Legion's End is doing the most. Very good card, Legion's End, no doubt. <laughs> Good news is they can't pump this this turn, so at the very least, you know, we'll be able to get Nessa down and then uh, push some stuff out there. Uh, Bio Essence Hydra is also hopefully going to be pretty good, but we'll see. Um, our goal with it against a deck like this is slow them down uh, as much as possible. Thankfully, we've been able to do that so far, uh, which is great, but obviously that's not always the case. Uh, we're just going to do this, and we're going to attack here. I'm using the island here mostly because I don't want the forest to be susceptible, like the breeding pool, for instance. I don't want the breeding pool to be susceptible to a removal spell um, because we're very heavily dependent on the green. And so I'd rather be a little more careful with that. Um, if we need to block, I'm much more apt to blocking with an island uh, than I am a breeding pool because we lose our second green source. Oh, okay. That's fine. I I mean, again, this is why we did that, is so we didn't lose a forest. Um, but they can't kill anything this turn, which is good. Let's do this. Um, I'm actually going to keep that. It's a little unexciting, but I'm going to keep it. Um, let's do this. Let's untap this. And then let's bio essence hydra. So now we're getting to the point of the game where we are hopefully going to start taking over. Um, I am going to attack in here. They can block and then shock if they want. They've got a few options, I'm sure, but they've only got one card in hand. So I'd rather them do this now. That's fine. So now they can block with the knight. Um, but now it's a bone crusher giant against a bio essence hydra that's an 11 11 and a nissa. And we have a follow-up Bioessence Hydra. <laughs> so, feeling okay, uh, if I'm honest. <laughs> uh, we'll enter it tapped. Let's do this. Let's play another Bioessence Hydra. Um, and there we go. There's the concede. All right, we got there. That felt much cleaner. That was a much better uh, showing from this deck. So, I really, really liked that. All right. Cool, so we've gotten two wins so far. Let's jump into game three. Oh, let's see what our reward is. Hydra's Growth. Man, I did not already have four of those for sure. Let's jump into it. Uh, last game with this deck. Really enjoying this deck, surprisingly so. Um, it's pretty strong. Uh, worth noting, I did not create this deck. I don't remember the individual who did, um, but we did not create this. This is purely somebody else was like, hey, this deck looks cool. Um, I think we kind of have to mulligan that. This we can keep. We can put a Gargos on the bottom here. Um, 
we get to incubation druid pretty quickly which is great land is very helpful as well there um red is a little nerve-wracking hopefully we don't just get yeah gruel i'm guessing gruel aggro maybe uh though they didn't play anything yet which is good uh they could just bone crusher or something here though wait for it there it is who called it who called it when you know you know when you know you know um okay yep well, that's certainly not good for us but uh worse things have happened we'll pass here we're gonna take a hit um the voracious hydra is actually really nice because eventually we just fight off this bone crusher so like we do have a an end game here oh <laughs> end game hill hydra oh look at that um So my question is, do we just play this out on the back of it probably is going to be good enough, or do we just wait? Um, I kind of want to stave off an attack or beta removal spell, so what I'm going to do is play this for two. Uh, we're going to auto pay. So then this will double the counters on it, and that just gives us a blocker here. Um, the reason I'm doing this is so that either they you know, have to kill this, or we have or we just get a creature that can block effectively against what they're doing. We do have to conserve our life total, so I think doing this now is a little bit better, um, despite the fact that we've got like a Gargos in hand and stuff like that, because obviously that would be amazing, but unfortunately I don't think we can get there this time. I don't think we can wait, I should say. Uh, again, I'm going to do the same thing where we'd use the island instead, uh, mostly because I'm expecting we're going to have to kind of block here. Um, I am not going to attack. Playing a little bit defensively, but I, I do think that that's pretty important right now. Um, we'll see what they want to do. They're in a position where Nightpack Ambusher is going to just get them extra value every turn for not doing anything. And so we have to get ourselves in a position where we can kind of deal with most of everything that they've got going on. We'll, of course, tap this first, but not going to matter. Um, and here they could just all out swing at Nyssa, uh, and kill Nyssa. And so that's definitely not good for us, uh, especially considering we've got a tap land coming into play next turn and a Gargos that's stranded in our hand, so. Um, the one thing that does keep them from maybe wanting to do that quite so much is the Night Pack Ambusher, um. But if they've got, like, another Nightpack Ambusher, they just flash it in and that is going to kill us. So that's pretty bad. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Um... Let's try and get rid of this Bone Crusher. I don't know if this is 100% correct. My guess is they've got, you know, a removal spell of some kind. They have to. A Shock would do it. Ah, yeah, okay. Yep. Uh, if they do, I mean, they've got plenty of options. They could still get rid of Nyssa as well. Not good, not good. Yep. And that's going to do it. Uh, not good for us. Definitely in a bad position. That's not a very good draw for us at the moment. That's terrible. You know, the more I play with the Ozolith, I want to talk about this. The more I play with the, uh, the Ozolith, the more I'm really just disappointed in how not great it is. Um, and maybe that's incorrect. Maybe that's just me not getting it or playing incorrectly or something like that. But it just does not seem very good. Um... It's very good in specific situations, maybe, but, like, nine times out of ten, those situations just don't happen. <laughs> um, and that's kind of bad. Uh, that's, I think, really terrible. But um, we just kind of lose here, right? We can play this, but we just get swung out for a bunch. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and concede. Let's sum up this deck really quick. Um, first of all, uh, this deck... I don't think is meant to be like tier one at all. Uh, I think it's just meant to be kind of a fun deck. Uh, it's meant to, you know, highlight Hydras a little bit. And I think it does that pretty well. Uh, we, 
we got to play with Bioessence Hydra as like a 12-12. We got to play with Voracious Hydra, uh, just kind of clogging up the board and killing stuff. We got to play with Gargos, like lots of really good Hydras, which was fun. And I, I love seeing uh, like an archetype that's not necessary or a tribal synergy that's not necessarily the most supported thing in the world push to the forefront just a little bit just to see how it's going to do uh hydras are always really really powerful uh but nine times out of ten the the decks are not like 100 percent there and i think that that's fairly true with this one however um it did pretty well i mean we won four out of six games with this which i think is i mean it's above it's above 50 percent, so that's pretty good um, and we got to really, really take over the board with not a lot of mana out. Uh, and I think that that's the real strong suit of this deck is that, um, without a whole lot of mana, you can still do a lot of things. And I think that that's awesome. Uh, I love this deck. I think it's a very fun one to try. Uh, it does require some amount of wild cards and I think it could benefit from some reworking in a couple of particular areas. Um, the Ozolith, it's cool and all, um, but I honestly don't love it as much as I think a lot of people do. I've I've fallen out of favor with the Ozolith. I would just sub it out for some ramp, like a couple growth spirals, maybe some Uros, like something like that. Um, I would much more, uh, or I would much, uh, much rather have, uh, because I would r much rather just get lands out onto the battlefield. That way, I know I'm jumping ahead a turn, not just like, okay, well, here's this Ozolith that's not going to help me for a number of turns. So... That's just my take on it. Um, I would suggest, you know, if you're if you're trying to build a Hydra deck, this Hydra deck, uh, this is a pretty cool starting place. But definitely consider some some different options. I think there's a few out there that you can definitely try. So that's just my take on it. Feel free, of course, to leave your suggestions down below. If you've got a deck suggestion, take it to our Discord, especially. It's a great place for it. But of course, you can leave it in the comment section below as well if you don't want to uh, jump in there. But regardless. Really do appreciate you guys watching. It's it's great to be able to make these videos for you guys and hang out and do all that stuff. So it really does mean a lot that you're here watching. And uh, thank you very much. I will see you hopefully very soon in the next gameplay video. I'll see you then, guys.